and today I'm here with Daniela Pierre, who is the Assistant Director of the Office of Alcohol, Drug, and Health Education. And today we're here to talk about how well students know about safer sex. So how often do you usually give presentations about safer sex? Um, well, this year has been my busiest year. Um, I believe it's been over 50 presentations that I've done, some of which have been for crowds larger than 500, which was for University 100, and some have been small as 10 students. So what is one question that a student has asked that really shows that they need this type of education? Well, it's not necessarily a specific question, but um, I, it's a really interactive presentation that I do. And so I have students use their current knowledge, if it's right or wrong, if it's a myth or not, based on their family experiences, friends, um, what they learned from the media. And some students actually still believe that you can get HIV from shaking someone's hand or, or sitting on the toilet seat, which in fact is a definite myth. You cannot get HIV that way. And other ways to prevent um, STIs or sexually transmitted infections are not the most accurate. So we really talk through that and use the, the other peers' information and what they have and what they know. So if a student walked in with a huge lump between their legs and they said, I'm only comfortable with showing you what's in between my legs, how would you deal with that? Well, I am a, the assistant director and I am a health educator. I know I am not a doctor, nurse practitioner, or a nurse, so I don't diagnose. What I would really do with the student is work with them, making them more comfortable to actually see a clinician at Student Health Services, which is right outside my door. So I'd make them comfortable, help them to book an appointment, and then they, they can actually see a clinician who will diagnose them. It's free to see someone here at Student Health Services. If there's a lab or if there's a prescription involved, there's usually a really small free. We also do offer free HIV testing at Student Health Services, and it's just an oral swab, and you get results within 20 minutes, which is great. How many students do you think come in here every semester for help? In my office, I do see a, quite a bit of students. Um, I would say at least 10 a week. So how do you think it's helpful for students to go to you as opposed to going to the internet? The internet is, is, is a great resource, but you really just have to know what you're looking for. So there are some websites out there that are medically accurate. It's great information like WebMD or GoAskAlice.com, just some two examples that I tend to go to if there's something new and cutting edge related to health information. But there are some out there that aren't medically accurate. And so they can go and someone can identify themselves as a doctor or a nurse and they're really not at all. So if they come to me, I can help them guide through that information. And sometimes I'll even go on the internet with a student to show them where they can go because fortunately I'm not accessible 24 hours a day. So, um, so they can come to see me. And sometimes it can get really, really scary to look something up on the internet. That example before, a lump on your leg <laughs> after going through the internet, you can realize that you know you, you walk away and you're going to die in a week, which is not true at all. It's a lump on your leg, but you know you can misdiagnose yourself. How would you describe your relationship with your clients? I really do have a great relationship with students here. We have open relationships. So students come in, they get the opportunity to just walk in and have a conversation. So they're not, they're not mandated to see me. They're not judicially sanctioned to have a conversation with me. So um, I would say we're a more friendly relationship. And I am pretty young. And so I'm able to better connect with students, which is, which is really great. And it's so much easier to actually have a conversation. And it's not necessarily related to safe sex. I talk to students about everything. You also give presentations at high schools. Do you feel that college students and high schoolers are on the same level when it comes to this type of education? Um, it depends. College students are coming from different places, and high school students are as well. And in different communities, they have different programming, so abstinence only versus comprehensive sex ed. So a lot of high school students, they know a lot, and that could be from their personal experiences, what they've talked to their doctors with, or their parents, and even if they have a sex education class. And college students are the same way. They're all coming from different places and, and may know a lot, but may not know so much. So at what age do you think students should get this type of education? Um, I would say it really has to start young. And it's not just about the sex education piece, because people are like, what are you going to teach a kindergartner how to use a condom? No, it's really starting them young with building self-esteem and self-confidence and getting them to know the difference between a, the right touch and the wrong touch, and just little things like that. And as they grow, they learn much more about themselves. Because you hear a lot about, you know, there's an oral sex epidemic in middle schools, and <laughs> nine-year-olds are having oral sex and engaging in sexual activity. but if, you need to really look at why they are doing that. So really teaching and talking to your students. If you are a parent, 
talking to your your kid, to your child about this? Because if you're not giving them the information, the question is, where are they receiving that information? Where are they getting it? So it's really good to start off young. So if you were to summarize your presentation in one sentence, what would you say? Oh, that's a hard one in one sentence. Um, just a few adjectives I can say. It's, it's educational, it's interactive, it's really fun. Um, I try to make this, or I don't use fear tactics, so I don't show you know, the pussing sore or the green discharge or the thing that give, you know, when you sometimes when you look at pictures of diseases or infections, you get really creeped out and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to have sex ever because that's disgusting. I'm not really about that. I'm giving them the information so they can make those decisions for themselves. If they're sexually active or not, if they will ever be sexually active or maybe just information for their friends or even their family too. And lastly, can you tell me about what these objects are on the table? Sure. We have a few objects today. Um, we have a beanie weenie, which is just a stuffed um, representation of the penis, male genitalia. We also have little Jimmy, which is a little stress toy, which we receive um, on occasion from our condom distributors. If you notice, it's a little condom. We also have a plastic vagina <laughs> and also um, other parts of the re uh, female reproductive system. And we also have some um, great promotional items that we had for Breastville, which was our breast cancer awareness program. Save the Hooters, and also um, a cup for Breastville as well. Nice cup. Do you usually give these out for free, you said? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So whenever we have programs here on campus, we always bring some extra materials so that not only can they walk away with something free, which is great, but it also provides additional information. So they can go to our website, adhe.gmu.edu, or for this one, for example, it says save the Hooters, and it gives the um, 1 800 number to the American Cancer Society. So they can ask any questions to this website, I mean, to the phone number related to breast cancer. We also have a basket full of free condoms. How many go out a year? We have gone through quite a bit of condoms this year. Just this semester alone, I would say at least 20,000. And we don't just give away male condoms, we have female condoms, male condoms. Polyurethanes, if you're allergic to latex, we also have options if you're different sizes, above average, below average. We also give dental dams and lubricant as well. Well, thank you so much for your time, Danielle. It was a, sure. a pleasure to have you here.